Welcome to ReScientific for City on the Go training for the basic user. During this video, we will cover how to sign into for City on the Go using a web browser, learn about the input information such as alarm limits, current reading, and the input menu. Next, we will learn about the five different in input conditions and what they mean, followed by the alarm handling by showing the different types of alarm conditions and how to handle the alarms. Next, I will explain the main menu options and how you can produce system reports. And finally, I will explain how you can get assistance from our Reese Scientific Technical Support Division. To use Reese Presidio on the go, you must open up a web browser. Any web browser will work. However, you must be logged into the NIH network. If you are outside the NIH network, you can only access Reese Presidio on the go if you have VPN access into the network. Each customer site at the NIH will have their own individual web address to access the Reese system using Presidio on the go. A sample address is on the screen. However, you can contact your Reese administrator to get the web address for your node. After entering the web address, the Reese Presidio on the green logon will appear. You will need to enter your username and password to continue. If you do not have a username or password or you've forgotten this information, you will need to contact your system administrator. Enter your username and password and hit go to log on to the system. After it's successfully logging on to the system, you will see your inputs displayed on the screen. I will now cover how to obtain information from an input. To do this, you simply need to left click on an input. A menu will appear that will display the input's name, the current reading, the low and high limit, and its current status. You could do this for any one of the inputs on your screen. You also have a menu of operations that you can use as well. The manage alarm icon will allow you to inhibit or reset an alarm. The graph readings will produce a visual graph of readings for the input while the list events will produce a report of events that has occurred for this input, and the list readings report will produce a report of the readings based on a date range that you select. Knowing your alarm colors and their meanings will help you manage your Reese system. The color you want your inputs to be is green. This indicates that the input is within its alarm limits and is in a normal condition. If an input goes outside of its alarm limits and there is an alarm delay set up on the system, the input will turn yellow, indicating a pending alarm condition. If during this delay time the input goes back into a normal range, the input will turn back green and the alarm condition will cease. If the input exceeds the alarm delay, it will then turn into a red or an alarm condition since it is now outside of its program limits and the alarm delay for recovery has expired. When you manage this alarm to inhibit this input that is in alarm to stop the alarm condition, it will then turn back to be a yellow condition and it will show that the input has been disabled for a specific amount of time. Another condition that we have is the purple or unused condition. This is mainly when a unit is placed out of service or the unit is taken out for repair. During this time, no data will be collected for this input. Lastly, we have a brown input, which is a communication error. This means there is nothing wrong with the unit being monitored, but there is a problem with the REST hardware communicating back to their main REST computer system. You should call REST technical support and to try to repair this condition. If we cannot repair this condition over the phone, a service ticket will be written and a Reese technician will be dispatched to fix this condition. At the bottom of the web window, you will find system status icons. Input 129 is used to monitor the power on the system, but this is only for individual computers and not normally set up for servers. If your system is on a server, most likely you will not see this input. Input 130 
is to monitor the database. If the database is getting full or it has lost communication with the network, this input will go into alarm. You will need to contact your IT department to see if there is a network issue. You may also have to call Reese Technical Support for assistance. Input 131 is a buddy watch. If you have more than one node on your system, you will have this icon on your system to monitor the communications for each one of your nodes. Input 132 and all even numbered inputs monitors the communication of the Reese inputs. If your input loses communication, this input will turn brown and the input will notify you of an alarm notifying you of this communication issue. You should call Reese Technical Support to troubleshoot this and again, if it cannot be fixed over the phone, a service ticket will be established to dispatch a Reese technician. Input 134 is to monitor batteries. If you have a wired system or a wireless system, the Reese monitoring system monitors the batteries and will give you a warning before the battery goes into a dead condition. This will give you the opportunity to swap the battery out and put the condition of that input back into a normal condition. While you have a battery watch condition, the transmitters will still be transmitting the data until the battery is replaced. Again, when you click on an icon, you will get the status of the input along with the menu that comes up. If an input is in alarm, you will click on Manage Alarm and a dialog window will appear. The default setting to inhibit an alarm is for 15 minutes. If you want to choose a different amount of time, you will select the middle radio button and you can manually enter the time needed from anything from 0 0.01 hours up to 9,999 hours. To inhibit an input for 30 minutes, you would use 0.5 hours. You will enter your username and password and hit the go button. And you will see the input turn into that yellow condition showing a status of inhibited. To reset an input that is inhibited, you can come up and select it by left clicking on it and selecting the manage alarm. Select the reset and enable, put in your username and password and hit go. If the input is within its operating range of the lower and upper limit, it will turn back into a green or normal status. Selecting the graph readings icon will display a dialog window with a seven day graph. The two red lines will indicate the low limit and the high limit for this input along with the readings that will be on the screen. If you would like to change the date range or the X or Y axis, you can come up to that, select it and hit refresh graph. And in a refresh graph with your parameters will be displayed on the screen. To print this graph, select print graph and the graph will open up in a new window. You can select either file and print or control P and you can either print this out to a printer or as a PDF. The list events report will allow you to print a report of any event that has been recorded with this input. After selecting the input and selecting the list events, you can then again change the date range to get either more or less information than what you want for your report. Again, you can hit the print list. It will open up in a new tab and you can print by either going to control P and selecting your printer or PDF or doing file and print. The list reading report will show all recorded readings. When you select the report, it will default from today's date back seven days. You can change the date range and hit refresh and you will get a new listing for your report. Again, if you would like to print this report, hit the print list, which will then put this report into a new tab and you can hit print or go control P to print your report out. 
Again, don't forget, you could also save this as a PDF as well. To get the system reports, you need to select the menu button in the top center of the screen. To do global events, select the global events button, select your date range, and your report will show on your screen. To print this report, hit the print list icon and your report will then go into a separate window and you can hit control P or file print to print your report. Selecting the node events report will again give you a window in the center of your screen with a seven day default. You can either select all events or look at the drop down window and pick the report that you need. Once you select your report, hit the go button and the report will show on your screen. Again, to print this report, hit the print list. It will open up in a new tab and you can do control P or file print to print your report. Selecting the readings report will give you a choice of printing either a single, multiple, or all inputs in a report. As with other reports, you can change the date range from the default of the last seven days to any date range you would like to have. After selecting your inputs, hit the go button and the report will then open up in a separate tab. You can scroll down the report to see readings for each input. To print the report, go to file and print or hit control P on your keyboard. The average report is the same procedure as the readings report, except it will give you the low and high reading of the day, along with the average reading for the entire day. Select your inputs and hit go and the report will then open up in a separate tab. To print this report, again, go to file and print or control P on your keyboard. Selecting readings graph will allow you to have either a single, multiple, or all inputs comparison graph on a screen. Select your date range and your inputs and hit go, and your graphs will show up in a separate tab. You could then look at the comparison of the two graphs. To print this graph, again, you either go to Control P and hit Print, or go to File and Print to print your graph out. If you have a question or problem with your Reese system, you can contact Reese Technical Support at 609-406-0073. You can also email them at nihservice at reescientific.com. Reese Technical Support is banned from 8 a.m until 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. After our calls, or routed to a call center, we will contact the on-call Reese technician. With any of these methods, you must have the following information to help process your request. Your name, customer number, nature of the problem, and a good phone number to contact you. Please note the email is only viewed during business hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You must call the phone number for technical support from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Monday through Fridays on weekends and holidays. Technical support will try to resolve your issue over the phone, but if it cannot be resolved, a service ticket will be established and a Reese technician will be sent during normal business hours. This concludes our training for the Presidio on the Go for the basic user. Thank you for viewing this video and enjoy your Reese monitoring system.